Our next and final talk. This is uh, Andrew Geshevitz. He's right. he's gonna he's impressed that I could pronounce his name um, after only uh, two hours of practice. Um, he's gonna tell us about slideshow. Now we've seen lots of talks. Those of us who write talks with slideshow, we recognize them all. You know, there's various telltale signs. Um, but some people haven't written their talks in slideshow, and I can only assume it's because it isn't simple enough. So uh, perhaps Andrew is gonna help us with this problem. Well, let's welcome him. Is, can you hear me? Good? Keep talking automatically? Yes, there? What? Eat the mic. Okay. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm Andrew. Um, that's kind of the phonetic. You know, if you haven't seen the, the 12 letters that make up my name, and you look at it, there it is. Um, so I work on a time series database uh, and monitoring system at Heroku. Um, we use Go. I don't really like Go, but OK. Um, and you know, I've dabbled with Lisp, uh, Common Lisp, Scheme, Clojure, probably since about 2005 or so. Um, and I've written a lot of stuff, but none of it's ever really been, you know, it's never really stuck. Um, so, a couple jobs ago, I did manage to get a Clojure app in production, but it was decommissioned maybe six months after I left. So, um, but I often ask myself why? Like, why do people not understand why I like Lisp so much? Um, any flavor? Uh, and you know, do people believe it's not practical? Um, do people? Are people so hard to change? Um, are am I just horribly unsuccessful at marketing? Like, where where are the marketing people? Are there any marketing people in the room? No. Okay. Um, and and then there's the reactions that you get when you talk about it. <laughs> Lots of something something parentheses. You know. I mean. So then there's the claims like this, which are totally on the money. You know, but. Maybe we should pick Racket instead. That would be pretty awesome, right? Like, um, so the success of closure proves that parentheses blindness is a thing. You know, people can overlook parentheses, um, and it proves that given the right set of conditions, a Lisp can actually thrive in production and and you know and work, um, and you know it can overcome the barriers to adoption. So I have to ask myself, what are Racket's barriers to adoption? What are my barriers to adoption? Why am I not writing real programs um, in Racket yet? And you know, when you think about it, you think about the established code bases that are out there. They don't really work well with Racket. Um, a Ruby code base doesn't work with Racket. A Go code base doesn't work with Racket. Um, there's an established norm. If, if someone does a project in Rails, then the next project is going to be in Rails because they already have the leverage of that. Um, and there's already this established bias against Lisp to, get, to begin with. Um, so I've started taking a second avenue um, towards my own personal adoption, which I hope helps in the workplace as well. And I, I think some of you got it. But if you didn't get it, uh, this is the Manhattan subway. They recently added a second avenue line. So. Um, so I'm slowly using rap Racket to create sharp, um, sharp tools, you know, and you know if I need a a script for uh, text processing, I'll just go to Racket. Um, I don't know. I think maybe it does, but maybe not. It'd be pretty cool if it did. Maybe maybe your next project will is uh, is a better awk. Um, I definitely use it for a desktop calculator. Um, I asked on the list recently about diagramming. Uh, got some interesting answers. I'm really looking at exploring what we can do with that next. Um, there's already data analysis tools and, and plot 2D, R-like experience type stuff. Interested in thinking about how I can incorporate that into the, some of the stuff I do. Um, there's Rash, of course. I'm kind of an eShell guy myself, uh, some Bash. But I think Rash is, is super interesting. Uh, and then, you know, for the documentation that I'm supposed to be writing, I think I should just be using Scribble. Um, 
thinking about like diagramming and things like that uh, as part of Scribble would just be amazing. Um, so I'm going to try that next week. So Racket already has great tooling. I mean, there's there's no way to, to deny that. I can already do so much um, today that I need to do. Um, and the ecosystem is evolving. The community is growing. Um, there's books coming out. Beautiful Racket is great. I've heard of a, um, a new book about web programming in Racket that's coming out soon. I think it's maybe just an ebook. E Things are just super looking up. Um, so preparing presentations is hard. Uh, and I'm a principal engineer at work, so that kind of means that I'm supposed to know what's going on, I guess. Um, I, I think maybe opinion leader would be a little bit more apt of a title, but you know, whatever. Uh, and I choose to give internal talks and talk about what it is that's happening, what I'm thinking about. Um, and sometimes, you know, even in a meeting, I need to quickly come up with uh, something to present. You know, just quickly do that, which isn't always easy. And it'd be nice to do that with a lot of fuss. So when I typically prepare a presentation, I kind of write out what it is I want to say, and then, you know, spend way too much time thinking about how do I turn that into slides. Uh, and so I thought Racket has, uh, has slideshow. Uh, maybe that can help. And so a quick story about that. So in May, I signed up for a talk at San Diego DevOps, which was at the time a local meetup for me. And I procrastinated on slides until just hours before, as one does. Uh, and then I chose to do it in slideshow. <laughs> the laughter says so much. Um, Ironically, this is a JPEG, or this is a PNG, not a GIF. But <laughs> so slideshow is immensely powerful. You've seen numerous examples of that today. The fact that we were rendering video live in slideshow um, is amazing. Uh, early this morning, uh, it's powering this presentation right now, uh, but it's certainly not simple. I, I kind of like to think of it as more like HyperCard Lite um, for experts, which is kind of ironic. <laughs> So, so I decided that maybe I could do something about that, make the base case, make the simple case simpler. And so I uh, am introducing to you Slideshow Simple. Um, it's really not much more than a read syntax that implements a Slideshow uh, module. Um, but who cares? Uh, it runs just like you would a normal Slideshow uh, presentation. Uh, it even supports you know, all of the things that Slideshow supports. Uh, it largely does what I mean without frustration. So it's inspired by this tool sent by the Suckless project. Uh, if anybody has heard of that, I think I've seen uh, DWM uh, use today. And it's pretty good. Slideshow simple, that is, is pretty good for the Takahashi method, which is slides like this. You know, like short slides that are one or two uh, words long, lots of them. I'm on slide 63. Some Takahashi presentations are probably 500 slides in, in 40 minutes. Who knows? I mean, that's kind of crazy. But um, I, I like to think of slides, uh, slideshow simple as uh, a, a tool for writing uh, slideshows that are Takahashi inspired. Um, so we get a little more a few more tricks. So we've got numbered lists, we've got bulleted lists, images of cats because no presentation is complete without one. Uh, we get quotations. Uh, longer paragraphs kind of just do what I mean, just thanks to slideshow. And, <laughs> and sometimes, you know, you want to just borrow Robbie's slides. So, uh, this is the uh, closing slide from his uh, ICFP 2014 talk. This is probably the only slide that I could find that didn't require about seven libraries. Um, this relies only on picked. Thank you, Robbie. Um, and, and so you, you can do that here. Um, the syntax, it's just plain text, one slide per paragraph. Uh, line oriented, and what that means is that the first couple characters tell you exactly what the slide is going to be. 
the comments become speaker notes, and they're Unix style. Uh, prefixing a line with a backslash, a backslash allows you to uh, to quote the and escape the the initial characters. Um, so you can do an image with this. So this is just bang, and then the path to the image. Uh, that list it looks exactly like the list that I showed you before, but this is the syntax for a list. Uh, bolded lists are that way. If you want to quote Wayne Gretzky, you can do that uh, with, you know, uh, alligator equal or greater than or whatever you want to call them. Uh, and then this is the, you know, the same syntax we saw for Robbie's slide. Um, and you can kind of just embed arbitrary racket there. So it makes simple slideshows trivial, uh, relatively frustration-free on the average case, and that's what I'm going for. Um, in fact, it's frustration-free enough that I wrote the first version of this presentation with slides in mail.app in my bed before, you know, before I went to sleep. Uh, emailed it to myself, and it executed just fine. So I think it's the case that tools exist to reduce barriers and make our lives simpler. Uh, I've been making tools in Racket, and I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, there's an existing ecosystem of really high quality uh, and functional uh, foundational libraries uh, to leverage and build upon, like Slideshow, uh, like Pict, like Racket GUI. Um, and since we all need tools to do our jobs, it only seems, you know, it only seems to be the case that if we start writing tools in Racket, make people start using them, maybe they'll start uncovering uh, the reasons why they don't like Lisp. Maybe we'll reduce their biases uh, and start adopting Racket a little bit more in work. Um, so I hope you'll give it a try. I hope I've inspired you to um, figure out how you can utilize Racket to improve your life, reduce your barriers um, at home, in the workplace, wherever you need to do things. And I just wanted to say thanks to uh, the Racket community. Thanks for people for having me. Um, this has been great. I'm really excited to be a part of this community. Thanks. Andrew, before we take questions, can you show the, the source to your talk? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think we're all I dying to see it. I was hoping you would ask that. Uh, that yes. that okay. was actually. Uh, uh, so while he's uh, cutting the talk, um, we can queue up another question. So just a minute. Uh, here, why don't I? Oh, wait, that's probably not what I wanted to do. This is why you need rash. <laughs> this, is, this is why I need rash. But yeah. more importantly, um, you know, it's easier to, to do when you're not holding a microphone. So as you can see, there's the, the speaker notes. Um, that are right in there, uh, and uh, I, I'm immediately tempted to make it more complex by having some syntax for say repeat the the slide from my note. But that's where yeah, we, so that's how I we mean, got where we are. So let's there, take a real question now. There's some duplication of that. There was one slide where I was telling the story. Um, yeah, obviously. Yeah, here it is. Uh, so I, I wanted to, to kind of do the reveal, you know, which Racket has, or Slideshow has a nice way to do that. This doesn't, but it's just copy and paste, no big deal. You know? Question here. Yeah, so the question is, uh, <laughs> I could, uh, that might actually work. Uh, the, the question is, what, what did I choose to leave out? Uh, and the, the stuff that I left out is all of the stuff that I wouldn't need to use or wouldn't want to use if I was preparing for a, a presentation an hour before the presentation, right? Which, I mean, if I really need that, then I probably shouldn't be preparing a presentation an hour before. <laughs> Another question? Uh, no. I, it, so the, the question is, does a slideshow simple have standard cat? Like standard fish, um, no. But if uh, if we get something in Racket that you know draws a cat, maybe there is one. If there's a fish, maybe there's a cat. But I don't remember ever seeing one. 
um, then you could do it the same way that I just did the, the shocked face. So um, we could probably make that simpler, too, if we really, really wanted to. Okay. It sounds like he wants a pull request. Uh, let's take one more question in the back. Is there a way to configure things? No, that sounds complicated. <laughs> All right, on that note, let's thank Andrew one more time.